you know, you're searching around on a, on a pond site and you're looking for uh, water treatments and you hit that, that water treatment page and all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, what is all this stuff? Well, I want to just kind of quickly go over the different types of water treatments you're going to find and, you know, what they do, you know, what, what are they for? And the, and the first thing we're going to talk about is ammonia control. You know, a lot of times if you're having some fish health issues, uh, it's caused by a buildup of ammonia. So the first thing you're going to want to do with almost any kind of a problem in your pond, if you say, man, there's something wrong, get a test kit. Test kit is first. And then if your results are showing high ammonia, then you would, you know, click on the ammonia control button and find all the products that would be used to, uh, to get rid of ammonia. Because that, that tends to build up when you're, you've really got a, a overstocked pond and it can wipe out a lot of your fish in a hurry. And now if you've just thrown a bunch of goldfish in, you know, the pond treatments can sometimes be expensive by the time they're shipped to you. You can always start over with a few less koi. Or if you've got a bunch of koi and you're like, oh man, I don't want these guys to die, then while we you know, sort out the root cause of this problem, you need to be treating immediately for ammonia, getting that down. Now, chlorine remover is when you add fresh water to your pond from city water, any kind of treated water, um, and we normally just, you know, call that city water, something out of the tap, tap water would have a chlorine in it. Uh, it keeps us safe when we drink it, but it's harmful to your fish. So, you know, using a dechlor, you know, when you're first adding water to your pond, and any time you add a significant amount of uh, water. Uh, during the summer, if you've lost a few inches of water and you're going to add quite a bit, throw in just a little bit of decor. Now, you know, it's like laundry detergent. More is not better, so follow the instructions. If you're just going to put in a little bit, you know, take a look at the bottle, depending on the size that you have, and it's going to tell you how many ounces to put in for roughly how many gallons of water you're going to put in. And, you know, you, you don't need a whole bottle if you're just going to add, uh, you know, 50 gallons of water. A few drops will probably do you. So keep in mind, well, you know, more is not better. Now, fountain treatments, these are treatments for fountains that are normally in a, in a say, inside a building. You know, if you're in the lobby of your building, you have a fountain. Most of these fountain treatments can be used without even worrying about the label. Now, if you have a fountain outside, and it's also used as, you know, for birds, as a, as a not a bird feeder, but, you know, a bird waterer, um, you know, be careful because some of the uh, fountain treatments are toxic to birds. So you want to check that. And, of course, some are toxic to fish. So be sure you, you make sure that you're buying a fountain treatment that's uh, safe for whatever's going to have access to that water. Now, fountain treatments are very effective, mainly because they don't care what they kill. So, you know... If you've got an indoor fountain, knock yourself out. Don't use bleach. Now, a lot of people say, oh, just use bleach. It's cheap. Well, it is cheap. It works great, and it also will eat the heck out of some of your pumps, uh, depending on the type of pump you have. So, you know, better safe than sorry, and stay away from, the, from bleach. Now, beneficial bacteria you'll see. Uh, you'll also see microblift often li listed by itself. Microblift uh, manufactures probably the most popular um, brands of beneficial bacteria. This is uh, bacteria. It's a product that you add to your filtration system normally early in the season and it, because all the bacteria, the good bacteria that's been working for you, keeping your pond clean, dies during very cold weather and it's called reseeding and you want to reseed your bacteria. Now bacteria comes in different forms. You can buy it in a powder form or in liquid form. With powder form it's a little bit more work because you don't just throw it in. Uh, typically you'll mix it with warm water and let it sit, and follow the instructions and then add it. Uh, most of the microblifts are just shake it up and pour it in. Uh, follow the instructions. Defoamer. A lot of times, uh, depending on, you know, the, you know, there may be a, an issue in your pond that's causing this, but you'll start to build up a lot of foam around your waterfall. And defoamer is great. I mean, if it's something where you just, because you have so much action in your falls and just a little bit of, you know, the leaves are falling right now and so you're getting a lot of foam, you know there's a problem, you know that you're going to have to take care of it, you're going to have to get the netting up, you're going to have to take care of the leaves, but in the meantime, a little bit of defoamer, and this stuff lasts forever, so you don't have to worry about it going bad on you, you know, throw a little defoamer in, the foam is gone instantly. It's magic. You know, uh, 
algae control. Difference, boy, you know, they, they made it hard on us, but there are a lot of the old algae controls worked great, and now we can't get them anymore because I guess they were finding their way into to natural uh, landscaping and, and hurting our ecosystem. So uh, we're a little bit more limited these days. You want to figure out what kind of algae you have and then look for the solution accordingly. Now, if you've got, you know, the floating algae uh, or the blanket weed algae, uh, sometimes called hair algae, you want to look for a treatment for that. If it's just green water where, you know, if you dipped um, a jar in the water, I can't tell you how many times at the pond store we, we sat there, you know, we were, you know, we had a pond store with, you know, a big indoor store and all the outdoor ponds. And people would show up with a, with a container of water and it was always, you know, bringing us their green water to show us. And uh, the businesses alongside were thinking we were taking some kind of weird currency. You know, people were paying in jars of green water. So that's a pretty typical problem. It's a seasonal issue. Uh, you can find some algae control products to handle that. Um, barley, uh, I separated barley out because that's kind of a unique treatment. Um, and it's usually kind of a, it's sold in bales typically or wrapped in netting and you drop that in and some people just swear by barley as a way to, to keep down and kind of prevent algae from growing. Um, if you have a lot of algae already, adding barley is probably a little too little too late. So you want to clean that up, use your algae control, and then add barley once you've got it clean again. You know, fish health, if you've got injuries or illness with your fish, that's where you're going to look and find the treatments for it. If you see the fish rubbing along rocks, scraping, if they have sores, that's where you want to go in and look in your fish health products and find the solution. Um, it's, it's a pretty in-depth topic, so we'll cover that in a, in a different section. But, you know, if your fish are sick, fish health is where you want to be looking. pH control, one more thing, it's sort of like ammonia control. If you've discovered in uh, your test kit that you have high or low pH, then there's products that can raise and lower the pH. And the last thing is uh, pond clarifiers. Now, those are often called flocculants. And a lot of times, uh, let's say you've got that green water and it's just everything's kind of murky. And you've got a good filtration system, but the stuff is so small, it's just going right through your filter and it's not getting caught. Now, that's where the uh, pond clarifiers work great. They tend to clump all of that algae together into clumps that are large enough to be taken out by your filtration. So if you've got that problem where it's just like you got all these little particles that aren't getting caught in the filter, pond clarifiers are fantastic for that. A word of caution, once again, you know, follow instructions. So many people put way too much of that product in and it can be harmful when you start clumping all that together. There's sometimes some side effects where it kind of cuts out the oxygen in, the, in your pond. And if you've overdone it, you'll see your fish kind of gasping. So, you know, there's been some fish kills where people have just, you know, the bottle says this treats 3,000 gallons and they, somebody has a 300 gallon pond and they're like, yeah, but you know, this will do better. They pour the whole bottle in. So, follow the instructions. You know, you can really harm your fish more by over treating sometimes and just letting things go. I wiped out some just beautiful koi that I had in a tank. I was treating them and I, you know, it was a full day at the shop and I came back in late and it was probably midnight and I'm like, oh, man, I got to go do another treatment and I screwed up, you know, I, I miss, I looked at the bottle, I knew better, I put way too much in the next morning, all of my very nice koi were dead. So don't over treat, no matter what you're treating for, follow the instructions, you know, err on the light side, don't over treat.